34 and live alone in a rather large house. I was married and had kids, but I'd gotten divorced the year before. This house is meant for a large family, but I've never had the time to move out, so I just stayed. Being the only person in a large house, a lot of sounds resonate through the empty house all the time. The most common sound was from the air conditioner. It would make a hollow thud sound in the walls, which would then resonate through the house, sounding much louder than it actually was. Don't get me wrong, it was creepy at first, but I got used to it. Anyway, this happened on a Thursday night after I got home from a long day at work. I went straight upstairs and took my work clothes off to put something more comfortable on, then jumped on the bed and turned on the TV in my room. I didn't spend much time downstairs because I didn't need to. I had everything in my room, so the only time I would be downstairs for more than a couple minutes was if I was in the kitchen. I laid back and rested my eyes. After a moment, through the TV playing, I heard that familiar sound. I didn't even open my eyes, I just continued to rest. An hour later, somehow having not fallen asleep, I got up, getting hungry for dinner. I turned the TV off and opened my bedroom door, and almost on cue, that bang sound resonated again. I'd never recalled the AC making that sound more than once or twice a day, especially without touching the thermostat. I walked across the hallway to where the upstairs thermostat was. It was off, which means that it had been off all day. I wasn't fully scared yet though. My initial reaction was to try and figure out why the air conditioner was running while I had it off. I was really just upset that this inconvenience had to happen tonight. I went downstairs into the kitchen. The only thing I had left in my fridge was leftover pizza from a few days ago, so I set the oven and heated it up. I stood in the kitchen on my phone while I waited. Again, this time it was much louder and felt like it even shook the house. This was the moment I started to get scared. I hadn't convinced myself fully that this wasn't just the AC acting up, but other possibilities were starting to creep into my mind. Once the pizza was done, I ate quickly, then figured it best to go into the basement and check the AC unit. I didn't want to be creeped out the whole night, I just wanted to know what it was and be done with it. I opened the basement door and flicked on the lights. There was nothing special to this basement. It was unfinished and just had some old furniture, along with some boxes with seasonal decorations in them. I walked down the steps to the bottom, then walked over to the AC unit. I wasn't sure what to look for, so I was kind of just looking around for anything obviously wrong, and while I didn't find anything, I did notice that it was completely off. Nothing was running. It had to be something else, which was not giving me the peace of mind I was looking for. I started walking back to the stairs, planning to check some other rooms on the first floor, but just as I started walking, I saw a figure right under the steps. The lighting was dim, but his eyes gave away his position. The person was crouched down behind some boxes under the stairs. I knew he saw me looking at him as we were making eye contact and I had completely stopped walking. In hindsight, I wish I had pretended to not notice and continued walking, but in the moment I couldn't help my reaction. Once I snapped out of it, I sprinted up the steps and slammed the door behind me, locking it shut and putting a kitchen chair up against it. I didn't hear them following me, so I took it as a sign that they weren't here to fight. I called the police while standing next to the basement door in case they tried to escape. I was scared, but I also didn't want them to get away. I stayed on the line until the lady said the officers were three minutes away. Then I heard it again. The person down there was hitting something. Over and over, heavy blows hitting something solid. It seemed like either the concrete floor or the wall. From the resonance of the hits though, it felt too heavy to not destroy the wall, so I assumed the floor, but I had no idea why. After maybe 20 hits, it went silent. Moments later, officers came to the door. 
They captured the man downstairs quickly, and he surprisingly looked like a very normal man. Regular clothes, well-groomed. Didn't really look like he would be someone to break into a home. The officers brought up two tools as well. A thick crowbar and a large hammer. After retaining the man and putting him in the car, one of them brought me into the basement to show me what was going on. In the far corner, opposite of the AC unit, there was rubble and plywood shards all over the ground. I don't know how I didn't notice it. On the wall, though, were huge indents of metal. It was almost unrecognizable, but it was a small, old safe that was built into the wall. The damage that was done to the wall safe looked insane, and I was shocked that it hadn't given in. It's funny, though, because there was nothing in it. I do remember the seller mentioning it and giving me a code when we moved in, but I never bothered to stash anything in there. The officer I was talking to said they'd seen it before in a lot of the big homes around the area, as a lot of burglars go straight to the safe and often don't loot anything else in the house. Of everything, the fact that the man looked so normal is what creeped me out the most. Just knowing that literally anyone could be doing things like this is not a comforting thing to think about. I ended up repairing the wall and just covering the safe. I also plan to move out soon and get a smaller house that's easier for me to stay alert in. Because this situation could have been a lot worse than it was, and I don't want to take any chances next time. I was 16 at the time. My parents were away on a short vacation to celebrate their 20th anniversary. I acted sad when they left, but really I was super excited to be alone and have the whole house to myself. They left Friday morning after I went to school. When I got home, I made a quick snack with the food they left me, then went to the living room to play video games for the entire night. I had no school tomorrow and nobody was home to tell me to go to bed so I wanted to stay up as late as possible and enjoy the time I had. I was playing online with my friends for a while, but my buddies weren't as lucky as me, so at around 10pm, all of my friends had to hop offline. Come 11, or maybe closer to 12 even, my neighbor's dog started barking. They have a huge dog, so it was really loud even though their house was a good distance away from mine. I kept playing, but through the headphones I could still hear the dog barking like crazy for what had been a whole three or four minutes. It was really late, so I was both concerned and annoyed. When I found a good time to pause my game, I got up really fast and looked out the side window over at their house. None of their lights were on, but their dog was still barking. I was pretty sure it was barking from inside the house, too. Then I saw a man walking through their yard and onto the sidewalk. It was dark and hard to see, and I didn't see where he came from. Knowing the dog was probably barking at the guy by their house, and seeing him walking away, I went back to playing my game. I played for 15 minutes or so, before someone knocked on my door. It made me jump, but I was in the middle of a match, so I couldn't just get up. I kept playing, hearing the knocks continue. When the match ended, I took my headphones off and heard the knocks again. With my headphones off though, I realized it was coming from the back door, not the front door. Then I remembered how late it was and got really confused, but also a bit agitated. What could they possibly want from me this bad to be continually knocking on the door at midnight? I stood up but then I decided I didn't want them to see me and thought that if they realized nobody was home, then they'd leave and come back some other time. And if they stayed, then I'd know something was wrong. All the blinds were closed, so I didn't have to worry about that. I sat back down and continued playing. No more knocks came for a while after that. I played until almost 2 a.m., I was really tired and my eyes were struggling from staring at the TV for so long. I took my headphones off and turned off the TV, then went upstairs to get in bed. I laid in bed for a few minutes maybe, not very long, when I heard something outside.
a vehicle coming up our gravel driveway and stopping right in front of the garage. I stayed in bed, listening carefully. Someone got out of the car and closed their door, then walked around the house. I lost track of the footsteps once they made their way toward the backyard. A shiver ran through me. I got up and walked down the stairs slowly, still trying to not let anyone know I was home. But, about halfway down the stairs, I heard someone by the back door. It sounded like they were messing with the lock. I ran back upstairs and called the police. I tried not to sound panicked, probably because I was a stupid 16 year old and wanted to be cool, but they dispatched some officers to my house and told me to wait for 10 minutes until they arrived. I said okay and hung up the phone, then locked my bedroom door and waited. A minute later, there were a few noises coming from the back door. Then it opened. I heard someone walk in, then go into the living room. It sounded like they were taking things and putting them in a box. They moved quickly through each room downstairs, but after they went through the kitchen, they left, going back outside. I heard their car door open and close. I was relieved for just an instant before I heard footsteps reapproaching the house, coming back inside and into the last room downstairs. I guess they dropped the box off and came back for more. At this point, I was regretting not showing myself because the person downstairs really seemed to think nobody was home. He was making a lot of noise and was confident enough to come in for seconds. I was still sitting in my room, just listening to this horrible event taking place below me, when the footsteps started coming up the stairs. They went straight for my parents' bedroom, which was right next to mine. They were in there for a while, then they came out and went up to my door. The handle shook. Then the footsteps immediately left, back down the stairs and out of the house. The car pulled out and was gone in seconds. My heart was beating rapidly and I was trying to control my breathing. I thought I was seconds away from having to fight for my life. When the police finally arrived, I told them everything. They called my parents too. After they checked around and finished getting info from me, the officers were confident that the person wasn't coming back now that he knew I was inside the home. Aside from all that, my console was stolen, along with a bunch of other expensive things. So not only was I horrified all week, but I was also left with nothing to do until my parents got home. I'm just happy that whoever was behind that door ran away and didn't try to break inside. Because if he saw me, I don't know what would have happened. I work from home most days of the month. Sometimes I have to go into the office to pick something up or have an in-person meeting, but that would only be once or twice a month. Working from home is really nice, but I often find myself getting distracted easily. On this day, I had a lot to get done and not a lot of time to do it. I was focused, working on my laptop in the office, when the doorbell rang. I rushed over to the door and opened it a crack, seeing a man on my porch. Can I help you? I asked. Hi, I'm looking for Mr. Peters, the man said, smiling at me. That was my name, but I didn't recognize him. That's me. What did you need? The man said he had important information to discuss with me, and asked if we could talk in more privacy inside the house. I first asked what the information was about, but he declined to give any details. I'm okay then, I said, closing the door. I went back upstairs to my office and started working again. A minute later though, the doorbell rang again. I knew it had to be the same man which started making me frustrated. I ran back down to the door and opened it, fully prepared to tell the man to leave, but he was already gone. There was no one at the door, and no cars or anything outside the house. I stuck my head outside and looked around, 
then closed the door again. The rest of the day went by without any more issues. I finished working, though had to do an hour of overtime. Once it got late, I shut off the TV and went upstairs to shower before bed. I turned on the water and was waiting for it to heat up when the doorbell rang again. I checked my phone, seeing it was half past ten. I wasn't going to open the door, but I wanted to see who it was, so I went back down and looked through the peephole. There was a man on the porch in dark clothing and with a face mask on. Even with the cover up, I could tell it was the same man from earlier, based on his body shape and the way he was standing. My whole body froze, and I just watched him through the peephole. He rang the doorbell again. I could see he had something big in one of his pockets, either a large knife or a gun. It didn't even feel like any of this was really happening. I backed up quietly, but I think he may have heard me because he called out. I'm looking for Mr. Peters, just need to tell him something important. Thinking he knew I was there already, I ran upstairs and got my phone, calling 911. While on the phone, a gunshot ripped through the house. The sudden sound made my ears ring. I couldn't even hear what the officer was saying. The ringing faded over the next minute, and I heard nothing else. I was sure the guy had left, but I was still going to wait for the police. It was quiet for the whole time, until I heard sirens coming. Once they seemed to be nearby, I opened the bathroom door and stepped out and went over to the stairs. That's when I saw the front door was busted open, and not a second later, the man sprinted across the hallway and out the door just before the cops pulled up. I think he had shot the lock out, and my ears were ringing so bad that I didn't hear him come inside. I gave the cops a description of the man, but there wasn't much else to go off of. The man was obviously at my home to hurt me, and likely kill me. He knew my name and had been looking for me. That's what still scares me. Until he gets caught, I don't think I'll ever get over the fear of him coming back.